Hello, happy weekend everyone. I just want to say welcome back to home groups. Welcome back to Lighthouse Culture. I hope you're enjoying this series that we are in. Here we are in week or rather month three and you've already heard from Pastor Dan and Pastor Lewis. So here I am talking about the next Lighthouse value. This one is super important. They're all important, but this one is important really 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 and how we take it into our heart and how we apply it in our life and how we apply it in our relationships because it can either be really great or it can be uh, we can miss it and so I'm so happy to get to share with you today about the value we say the hard things we say the hard things when you hear that, it may make you think, yeah, we need to say the hard things. Or it may make you think, why would someone say something hard to me? I don't appreciate that. Depending on our personality and our makeup and our experiences, this value, at, when we just hear it, could cause different responses, different emotions. But the point of the value is love and it is biblical. And so we're gonna unpack that today. So I hope your heart is open and you're ready to think about how it is that we can say the hard things and do it the right way. You know, the way we say the hard things is important. And so when we think about it, we need to think, what, how do we do this? And so before we get into how we do it, I wanna get into how we don't do it. We say the hard things is a value that is not based on, ooh, now I get to vent everything I've ever thought about this person. Or, ooh, I get to run over them and just be me and I'm bold and opinionated and I just get to say what I really think now. It's not that. It is not that at all. And it is not choosing harshness over love. It's important that we know what this value isn't so we don't walk into it in the wrong way. We don't want to empower you to hurt others. That is not the point, the heart of the value. That's not the biblical basis of this value. And so I hope that everyone has in their hearts and their minds, this is not about harshness, about tearing people down, or about saying what you have thought for the last 10 years. It's not about that. It's about love. And love is a biblical concept. And if we don't have love, Paul tells us, then we're, we're missing it. And we're going to actually read in Ephesians chapter 4 where Paul talks about this. In verse 14, it tells us we should no longer be children. Spiritual children, that is. We should not be tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind and doctrine. That means we shouldn't go here or go there and be confused about what's going on in our spiritual life. We should be grounded in the Word. We should be grounded in our faith. We should be planted with deep roots. And he's reminding us of this. We shouldn't be blown by every doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. We should not be taken by thoughts and doctrines that men come up with that are contrary to the Word of God. We shouldn't be in that place. But rather, he says in verse 15, But speaking the truth in love, may we grow up in all things unto Him, who is the head, Christ. So that's saying that we have to be able to be grown up in God, to keep growing, to not be tossed about by crazy thoughts and ideas that the world is bringing to us every day. But we need to be able to hear and to speak. I'm adding here. We need to speak the truth in love, which is the Word of God, which is our biblical values. We have to stand on that. And we cannot say, oh, well, we're just going to take in this idea because it's easy and warm and cozy and they like it, so I'll like it too. We can't do that. We have to speak the truth in love. And I'm so thankful that he added in the word love. Because if he just said, we got to speak the truth, we wouldn't have a very good guideline or framework of how to do that. But it must be in love. And so I'm thankful for that. Think about an example that is something people do every day on different levels. Going to the doctor. Say you're having a hurt in your body, a sickness in your body, and, in your, and you need an answer. And you, there is a doctor who has seen you and observed you, who's tested you, who has looked over you and knows the answer. What if that doctor was like, mm, 
I know what's wrong and I know how to fix it and I know how to make them better and feel better and live better. But the doctor kept it to himself. What if that doctor was not willing to share the hard news? What if he wasn't or she wasn't willing to have the difficult conversation of the diagnosis? Because sometimes the diagnosis feels horrible and overwhelming. But in the next breath, he can say, but I have a treatment plan. And I have an answer and you can get past this. What if he wasn't willing to have that hard conversation that might bring tears or hurt for the moment, but then also bring hope? What if? Well, sometimes that's how we are spiritually, very often, really. And the doctor is a Holy Spirit. He sees and he searches us and he knows what's going on. And he will have a conversation with us. Sometimes he chooses to use others in our life for that conversation. Sometimes he speaks to someone important in our life, like our pastor, our friend, Maybe our parents. Isn't that a crazy idea? Maybe he uses a trusted mentor. Maybe sometimes he uses a stranger. Sometimes. But he will speak through others. And if we are not willing to have the conversation to say, this is what Holy Spirit's saying, and we say it in love, then how will we ever get to the hope to be free of this thing that he reveals. And so it can feel prickly and it can feel like, oh, I just, I don't want to go through all that. I want to, I'm comfortable with how I am. But Holy Spirit is not comfortable with how we are. He wants to grow us. He wants to do that. And so if we're going to be a vessel to be used by the Holy Spirit, we have to walk in the way that he walks. So how does the Holy Spirit walk? How does he lead? One of our values that you heard just last month was the Spirit takes the lead. And so we need to remember how he leads us, that he leads us. And he doesn't ever lead us with meanness or rudeness. He leads us with love. And so let's think about how can we be led of the Holy Spirit and walk in love with our fellow believers, with our brothers and sisters in Christ? How do we do that? Well, we have to exhibit certain things that are called the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> we need to exhibit love and peace and joy and patience and kindness, gentleness, self-control. When we are being the vessel of the Holy Spirit to say the hard things, He only uses love. Well, what about love? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we hear about what love is. And so we, I want to read that. Maybe you're like, Pastor Leanne, I'm familiar with 1 Corinthians. Everyone reads it at weddings and all these things. You know, love, it's about that. But let's think about what is love? What is loving for us to how to conduct ourselves? First he says, if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all the faith, but I don't have love, he says, basically, I'm missing it all. So if we're going to hear from the Holy Spirit and He's going to lead us, we still have to have the love. It says, love suffers long. That means it's patient and it's kind. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Wow, they go together. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. It thinks no evil. So if we're going to say the hard things in love, we have to do them not being puffed up, not um, thinking evil. We have to be patient as we do it. All of these things. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. So we can't say hard things rejoicing that we get to say them. That's not how to do it. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So if we're going to say the hard things and do it in love, we have to do it this way. This is our guide and our template, uh, our checklist of, am I, am I in this? Am I in this? Or is Holy Spirit in this? Am I in the right way? His way? Or am I like my opinionated way? We have to say it the right way. And so we have to let Him lead us and lead us in love and lead us in the fruit of the Spirit. We should be exemplifying that. We should be walking in it. And so if we're going to say it, we also at times have to be able to receive it. We have to be able to hear the hard things. We have to be able to hear from the doctor. 
the diagnosis and the treatment plan and then we can have hope. So how do we respond? If someone of spiritual authority in our life, who we've allowed into our life to speak into us, says something that is intended to grow us up in God, as Ephesians 4.14 says, then how should we respond? Should we respond in anger? And like, I'm offended? No, because that's not fruit of the Spirit. We should respond without offense, and we should hear it, we should take it into our heart, we should go into what we're hearing with an open mind and an open heart, not closing off, because if Spirit's leading, we want to hear what Holy Spirit has to say, and He leads, He takes the lead, and so we got to let Him lead our hearts, so keep it open. We've got to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in how we receive such a thing. We've got to have love and peace and joy. We can't let our joy go away because we heard something difficult. We've got to have patience. We've got to have um, gentleness in our response. I personally, when I hear something that's hard, I want to respond a little rigid in my flesh. But that's why we can't walk in the flesh. We've got to let spirit lead us, even in responding, especially in responding, perhaps. We've got to have self-control in what, how we take in what we hear. We can't just throw a fit. We're not two anymore. Like Ephesians 4.14, we're not children anymore. And we need to pray and we need to listen to what Holy Spirit is saying to us. Because there will be times, I know in my life, I've had to hear some hard things that I need to grow, that I need to not stay where I was, that I need to walk in a new level of obedience to God. And that doesn't always feel great until you start walking in the obedience and you're like, whoa, wow, this is so great. There's such extra peace for me right now because I'm walking in obedience and I'm thankful that I grew through the hard thing to get to this, this beautiful place. In Psalms it talks about that the Lord will breed, lead us into a broad place. And sometimes it's hard to get to that broad place. We've gone up a mountain. But when we get to the broad place, it's so beautiful. And we want you in the, to be led by the Lord into the broad place, the place that is easy to walk. So we value saying the hard things at the right time in the right way, always led of the Spirit, not of your opinions, and always completely enrobed in love. I hope you've heard this. I want you to now spend some time thinking about the questions that you're going to discuss with your group about when you've heard the hard things, when you've had to say the hard things, how that feels, and the ultimate joy. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Have a good discussion.